Hello, my name is Nick Heron. Join me on a snorkeling adventure when we go beneath the surface to discover lush vegetation and swim with the fishes. Today on another exciting episode of Today we are visiting picturesque Snyder's Flats, located just outside the beautiful, bustling metropolis of Bloomingdale, Ontario. Get ready to discover the amazing sights and sounds that lie beneath the calm, still waters of this small pond. Let's dive right in. When you first dive in, the first thing you notice is the expansive forests of lush underwater weeds. It all seems harmless enough at first, but in speaking with the locals, I have learned that thousands of swimmers have died here, becoming entangled in these noxious weeds. Richly fertilized for years with the decaying corpses of party goers and snorkeling enthusiasts, these amazing plants can grow right from the base of the lake up to the surface of the water. As I swim through this forest of carnivorous plants, you can see that they actually reach out and attempt to grab me. Who knows how many unmarked graves lie beneath this lush, verdant world. Notice how my specialized anti-fouling Teflon-coated t-shirt shrugs off their vicious attack. One has to be very careful not to become disoriented and lost in this featureless landscape. Protected by its guardian carp, this boulder has grown to immense proportions. There are so many larval boulders strewn across the floor of the lake that at some spots they have completely eaten the vegetation. When the denudation was discovered in the early Victorian era, industrialists of the age attempted to remove the boulders in order to protect the plants, selling it as gravel for concrete. In recent years, the natural balance has been seriously disturbed. Uncaring and unthinking homeowners have been flushing genetically modified pet rocks down their toilets. As the man-made rocks eat more and more of the natural vegetation, new ecological niches open up, exploited by communist lilies. The strange geometric and angular shape of many of the boulders at the bottom of this pond is physical evidence of the attempt by environmentalists to stem the ecological destruction by volunteering to saw away at the boulders with primitive hand saws. In the center of the frame you can see a little bluegill fish, expertly camouflaged against the gravel in the rocks below. But it isn't just small, dramatically curious creatures at the bottom of this pond. There are much larger creatures in the deeper waters. Here we come across a common carp eating the weeds at the bottom of the lake. If you listen carefully, you can hear the sound of its chewing. For over 200 years, it was rumored that the Bloomingdale swimming hole was fed by a mysterious underground spring. Scientists only discovered its location in 2013 using specially designed remotely operated vehicles. Let's go there now. Discovered at the incredible depth of over 15 feet, the spring oozes out a strange fog-light miasma 
Scientists who have studied this spring are unsure why the carp seem to be drawn to it. Perhaps it has a psychological effect, the equivalent of an underwater hot box. As an interloper in the underwater kingdom, it is important to remember that you might not understand everything that is happening. Here, I was unsure if the fish was displaying courtship or aggressive behavior. Regardless, I would have punched this fish if I'd had to. But whatever, he backed down. So I decided to swim up from the depths to see what was happening closer to the surface. remarkably quickly. By the time that I had swum up from the depths, obviously this fish had heard about what had happened in the deep, and he was hiding, because he knew if he got out of line, I would punch him too. When I surfaced, the beauty was simply too much to take, and so I chose to dive again, to hide my happy tears. That's all the time we have today. Goodbye. Oh, you again. Why are you always bothering me? Go away. Stop following me. You're harsh to my buzz, man. All right, out of here.